Hey, this is Dr. K from my medical school, and today we're going to do our first case report video. These case report videos will focus on how to approach patients who come in with complicated histories and create a broad but relevant differential diagnosis, as well as come up with an appropriate workup and management of the patient. In today's case, we will see a patient who comes in with nausea, vomiting, hypotension, as well as hypoglycemia, or low blood sugar. So let's get on with the case. Mr. H is a 55-year-old male with a past medical history of end-stage renal disease, status post cadaveric renal transplant twice, once in 2005 and second time in 2007 that have both failed and is now on dialysis. In addition, he has hypertension, hyperlipidemia, and a history of multiple small bowel obstructions that were medically managed in 2006, 2009, and 2010. He presents with nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, hypoglycemia, and hypotension. Mr. H noted that he started feeling fatigued about 10 days prior to admission. As the days progressed, he noticed worsening para-umbilical and epigastric abdominal pain with radiation to his back. He notes he has felt warm with occasional chills at times, but never took his temperature. He started developing nausea with accompanied vomiting. His episodes of emesis are non-bloody and tend to be triggered by oral intake. He has not eaten in the past eight days, but has taken in some water. He denies chest pain, shortness of breath, skin changes, or urinary symptoms. His symptoms worsened, and his family became increasingly concerned, so one night his family called 911. The squad came and noted he had a systolic blood pressure of 75 and a blood glucose of 45. He was started on intravenous fluids and was given an amp of D50, then he was rushed to the ER. In terms of his past medical history, he has the history of end-stage renal disease with two previous renal transplants now on dialysis, his history of hypertension, hyperlipidemia, and multiple small bowel obstructions, status post medical management of those obstructions. He has the past surgical history of the placement of both renal transplants. He has no known drug allergies. His current medication and lists include metoprolol 50 mg BID, Lipitor 40 mg QDAY, Hydralazine 25 mg QID, prednisone 10 milligrams every other day, which he takes for his renal transplant that has now failed. He was previously on a dose of prednisone 10 milligrams every day in the previous year, but has since decreased his prednisone dosage. And lastly, Sinicalset 60 milligrams Q day. His family history includes his mother who has diabetes and a stroke at age 70, father who had diabetes with hypertension and hyperlipidemia, and a brother who had a heart attack and underwent coronary artery bypass grafting. He currently works as a lumber cutter and has done so since he was 18 years old. He drinks about three to four beers a month, but denies use of chewing tobacco, alcohol, or illicits. He's currently not sexually active. On physical examination on arrival to the ER, he has a temperature of 100.2, blood pressure of 90 by 65, respirations of 22, and a heart rate of 110. In terms of his general appearance, he is lethargic and cachectic, but oriented and in no acute distress. He has no ecchymosis noted on his head, and sinuses are non-tender. His pupils are equal and reactive, and his nares are patent. The oral pharynx reveals poor dentition, but is clear without any lesions. He has no lymphadenopathy but his heart exam shows tachycardia with a regular rhythm. There's no murmurs, rubs, or gallops noted on auscultation. Lungs reveal decreased breath sounds at the bases, but no crackles or wheezes are heard. His abdomen is soft but protuberant. It is tender in the epigastric and paraumbilical areas to palpation. Bowel sounds are present, but no rebound tenderness and no ecchymoses are noted. His extremities have no cyanosis, clubbing, or edema. He does have a noted fistula, which he has dialysis through, in the left upper extremity, with good flow murmur on auscultation. His neurological exam is grossly non-focal. His skin is warm and dry without any rash, and there is no costovertebral angle tenderness. So the first question to consider is, 
what are at least five differential diagnoses you can come up that are specific for this situation? What would be your initial workup and management of these diagnoses? As a bonus question, what medication on this current list should be stopped? Place your answers to these questions in the comments down below. The person who comes up with the most complete answer I'll highlight in the next video. Otherwise, if you have any questions, put it in the comment section. Also, like this video if you like it. Place some comments down below as well as the answers to the questions I just asked, as well as subscribe. It's Dr. K from Medical School. I'll see you next time.